Hey there guys, so I want to thank you for joining today's live stream as always. I apologize for all the tabs. I've been working on a lot of stuff this morning. Um, so I don't really have anything in particular as far as like any kind of announcement or any kind of announcements to discuss. However, I still want to still want to mention about my website that I have been working hard on and it is bponlinefitness.com. You can check that out and you can look at various information about my program, how my program is structured, and how you can access live streams, how you can know when I do live streams. You can sign up for my email list that I do. I send out newsletters every week. I do try to share that more often. I just, there's a lot of different stuff I try to sort of get out there that I do offer. But one thing, if you are not a part of my email list, that's definitely something that I would recommend. I do every week send a newsletter out that discusses topics related to the live streams I do each week. So that it's somewhat of a sort of a guide on what I'll be discussing. So if you're interested in getting that newsletter, definitely reach out to me. Another thing I do as well is I usually always send a sort of a reminder for the live streams to let you know when new live streams are happening. At least a day before, I usually try to send those out so that you know that one's coming up. But again, as always, I do these at 12 p.m. Um, but I do want to mention that my website's live. I've been working on it. I'm going to make more adjustments to it. Uh, but I'm really proud of <laughs> sort of what I made there. It's been difficult trying to figure that out because building a website does take a little bit of time to sort of learn. And so I do want to share that and I'm really, really happy that that is up and running now. I'm going to continue to add to it and change it up. But with all that being said, guys, that's really all I have. I likely will have another trial event coming up soon relating to sort of fall and sort of, you know, getting people active while the seasons change which kind of goes into my topic today but i'll let you know when i do have another trial coming up or if that comes up soon but with all that being said guys what i'm going to talk about today is somewhat different than what i've talked about the past few weeks and this is more really related to now and more relevant to you know to how things are now and this kind of came up as I was thinking about how some people kind of get sort of off their routine as the weather sort of changes. Whereas like during the summer, we're all kind of moving around or out and about. And it seems like as seasons change, as we get into colder weather, people usually sort of get off track of their goals. So that's what I'm going to sort of target today and what I'm going to discuss so as the weather gets colder it can be more challenging to stay active outdoors however there are plenty of indoor workout options and creative ways to adapt your fitness routine to the changing seasons so and this is not only just you know outdoor you know working out outdoors but it can also relate to indoors because a lot of times you get up in the morning especially if you are somebody who you know you may have to work earlier in the morning and so if you do your workouts you're likely wanting to do them earlier in the morning but when the weather is colder you're just kind of sort of not really I guess motivated to work out so there's a ton of different options to keep in mind if you maybe not going to the gym or you know different options that are easily accessible that you can do inside and that you can do some of these without having to go to the gym so sort of keep these in mind so what are some workouts as the weather gets colder that you can do inside that you could do at home so there's high intensity interval training hit training which i've actually done myself and can be i will say it can be a powerful method of training it is not for everybody 
However, I actually enjoyed it. I like challenging stuff that may not be for everybody, but HIT training is a definitely a great option. It involves a lot of rapid changes and a lot of rapid movement. So you've got burpees, jumping jacks, mountain climbers for a short, intense burst. So the way that HIT training, which it basically explains, is that it's in intervals. So you're going through, you're doing basically one set of workout for a particular amount of seconds, I would say. So you may be doing like burpees for 60 seconds. You may do a short rest and then go into jumping jacks for 60 seconds, short rest, and then a mountain climber. It's somewhat similar to a circuit. However, it's it's more in intervals that you're doing HIIT training. That's a great option. There's a ton of different HIIT training workouts that are out there. And if you want to learn more, you can definitely reach out. But HIIT training is not for everybody, but that is something to keep in mind. It is a good cardio workout because I have done it myself and I can attest to it. You can invest in some basic home gym equipment like dumbbells, resistance bands, or stability ball for strength training. So I do actually have a client of mine that does a lot of workouts at home. And he's invested into some of the stuff. And a lot of these are very beneficial. Dumbbells, you can get some starter dumbbells that, that are affordable. You can get resistance bands that are affordable. Same with the stability ball. A lot of these are affordable, and you're going to get a really good workout. You can do a ton of stuff with dumbbells. That's what I really like to work out with a lot is dumbbells. Mostly, and I think it's probably my favorite method because you're, you're having to sort of hold the weight. A barbell is a little bit different, whereas with the dumbbells, you're having to control the motions with both hands. Again, that kind of goes back to me with being challenging. <laughs> I like challenging stuff when it comes to that. So dumbbells, there's a ton of workouts. You can target so many things. You can do leg workouts. You can do back bicep workouts. You can do tricep workouts, chest workouts. There's a ton of workouts that you can do with dumbbells. Resistance bands, there's actually a ton of different workouts. Now, it, too, it can kind of depend on resistance bands that you're using. There's ones that have handles and there's one that are more loop based. Depending on what you use, there's sort of a limit to what you can do. But one of my clients actually uses one that have handles. You can do a lot of different workouts. You can do chest workouts with those. You can do, you know, back workouts. There's a lot of different things that you can do with those. If you maybe don't have access to dumbbells as well. But Complementing them together is great because you're adding a little bit of a variation. Dumbbells, you're adding a little bit more resistance than resistance bands. Resistance bands, depending on what type of bands you have, you're not going to have as much resistance as dumbbells. So sort of keep that in mind. Stability ball. There's a ton of things that you can do with the stability ball. I've done stability ball based workouts. And they do offer a lot of challenge depending on what types of workouts you're doing. It can be a form of strength training. So sort of keep these in mind. You can invest in these. These are very inexpensive and very good to start out at home if you are deciding to do more workouts at home versus going to the gym. Something to keep in mind. Another thing that you can do pretty much anywhere, push-ups, squats, lunges, and planks can all be done anywhere. You can do those as body weight workouts or you can do those with dumbbells. You can do it with stability ball. There's a lot of different things that you can do with a lot of these workouts that don't involve you having to even leave the house. So sort of keep that in mind. These are great starter options. So before I move on into this, one thing I do want to mention is that you do need to keep in mind that when it comes to starting out, you don't want to stay in that same resistance. So if you do invest in equipment at home and you do decide that you want to do more workouts at home, keep in mind that in order to see a progression, if your goal is to focus on, you know, muscle gain, fat loss, there's a little bit of limitations there when you only have a small amount of equipment. 
with muscle gain, it is going to require a little bit more resistance to see progress. So keep that in mind, that there's somewhat of a limitation. Now, if you can invest in a ton of dumbbells, then, you know, there's no problem there. But a lot of people can't invest in that, and they can't, you know, that's a lot of money to put down, you know, having a complete home gym. So keep that in mind, that starting out, investing in those is great options. But if your goal is, in particular, muscle gain, you are going to have to go into an environment where you're going to, you know, be able to progress through your workouts. So that's something that I do want to mention. And because I know this, this has kind of been something that has sort of arisen that I wanted to discuss as well. So indoor activities and at-home workouts, which we've sort of discussed, there's many cities that have indoor sports leagues for basketball, volleyball, or indoor soccer. These are great options for colder weather. Indoor swimming is also a great option. If you do have access to a heated pool, swimming is a fantastic full body workout. Swimming is a really good workout that you can do. Again, if you have these sort of facilities near you, keep that in mind. It's another great way to stay active and stay on track. So moving on from, you know, sort of the fitness aspect of it, going into nutrition next. So staying on track with your nutrition. As the weather gets colder, it's important to adapt your nutrition to support your body's changing needs and maintain a healthy diet. So when it comes to going into the fall in the colder months, you are likely going to be eating more. So we're to keep that in mind to be mindful of how much you're eating. I mean, that's probably a subject that I can talk about maybe in the next month maybe talking about the holidays and what you can do, what are some healthy options that you can keep in mind or anything of that sort. But this is what I sort of want to discuss today is about balanced nutrition. So you want to maintain a balanced nutrition as the weather gets colder, not only specifically for staying on track of your goals, but it can also help with your overall health as well. Your immune system you know, having good nutrition is going to help support your immune system, your energy levels, as well as just your overall well-being. So, and I've mentioned this next section here multiple times. You want to continue to focus on whole, unprocessed foods, such as fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, whole grains, and healthy fats. That can be said for almost any season, but you really, in particular, want to keep it in mind you know, when the season has changed because you're likely going to be around a lot of, a lot more foods when you're getting into the holidays. So these are going to provide essential nutrients to fuel your workouts and support recovery. Embrace seasonal fruits and vegetables like squash, sweet potatoes, apples, and citrus fruits. These provide important vitamins and antioxidants to help ward off illness and inflammation. Sweet potatoes are really great. As long as you're not really loading it with a lot of, you know, brown sugar and a ton of butter and, you know, it can be, a lot of these can be healthy options depending on how you cook them. So keep that in mind. So healthy cooking methods. There is healthy cooking methods you can try and techniques for preparing food that retain the nutritional value of ingredients, which I kind of just discussed, while minimizing the use of unhealthy fats, excessive sugars, and other harmful additives. So boosting your immune system is extremely important, involves making lifestyle choices and adopt, adapting or adopting habits that support your body's natural defense mechanisms. So again, like I just discussed, if you're focusing on sort of those whole foods, you've got fruits, vegetables, anything that is really going to help boost your immune system is going to be anything of that sort. Focus on, you know, integrating those foods into, you know, your nutrition. While no single action can guarantee immunity, a combination of healthy practices can help strengthen your immune system. So that's the big key thing that I did want to mention is that you not only want to just focus on the foods that are going to lead you to your goal, but you also want to focus on foods that are going to, you know, keep you healthy you know, that's going to boost your immune system because you're likely, you know, many people start to get sick when it comes to this time of year. So keep that in mind that it's not just 
specifically about staying on track for your, towards your goal, but also your overall health. So what are some simple ways to boost your metabolism? So this is going on from the immune system into metabolism. So engaging in regular physical activity to promote good circulation and overall health, exercise can enhance the immune system's function. So again, if you're just getting started, start slow with exercise. You know, gradually start to, if you, you know, do some cardio, and then if you're comfortable, move into strength training, but do it as a gradual progression if you're new to exercise. There's a lot of easy stuff that you can do to get started to, you know, even just like a, you know, getting started with like 30 minutes of exercise a day and then moving up to an hour. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but don't just, when it comes to, you know, getting adjusted to a routine, don't just instantly change everything. Go into progression, change small things to get adjusted to an overall routine. So achieving and maintaining a healthy weight can help reduce inflammation and in support of immune function. Smoking weakens the immune system, so quitting is beneficial. You want to limit alcohol consumption. Excessive drinking can impair the immune function. A lot of the anything that sort of has an addic addictive nature Smoking and alcohol is something that you really need to be wary of because it can affect your goals if you're consuming too much of those. So again, you want to sort of basically focus on that regular physical activity. You want to maintain a healthy weight. And then you want to sort of be aware of anything that sort of, any sort of addictive habits. And I know those are really difficult to overcome, but if you can find a way to sort of limit those, that is great in and of itself. Alrighty guys, so that's pretty much all for today. I hope that you found this helpful and valuable. I wanted to share something a little bit different than I would normally share because I know I do share a lot of more science-based and more very different topics, but I wanted to sort of have something that relates to now and I felt like it was a great topic to talk about because of where we're at, you know, leading up to Halloween and then we're getting into Thanksgiving. I may do another sort of topic where I talk a little bit more about sort of the holidays and sort of what you what tactics you can take to sort of stay on track during the holidays. That may be another one that I come up with later on down the road. I do want to mention that I do have another live stream set. I think this will be relevant for a lot of people. And what I'm going to talk about next week is I'm going to talk about gaining weight or not gaining, not necessarily gaining weight, but gaining muscle for anybody who is a hard gainer. So that's anybody who has, who struggles with gaining weight or gaining muscle. And this is very, you know, connects with me because I'm, I was the same way until I sort of got into a routine of working out and really sort of narrow down my, routi my routine, my nutrition. So that's what I'm going to talk about next week. And I think for the following week, I'm actually going to sort of expand on that and talk about sort of maybe a topic on individuals who sort of struggle with losing weight. I think that's what I'm going to do the following week after that. But just keep in mind that for the next week, I'm going to talk about, you know, gaining muscle for hard gainers. That's going to be sort of my topic then. I already do have that event up, and I will likely get the next event up pretty soon. But if you have any questions or you have any feedback on anything I've discussed, feel free to reach out. I do want to continue to show that I do have my website. It is beefyonlinefitness.com. You can check that out. Tons of information there. You can reach my blog there too, which I'm working on updating a little more often, but I do have a ton of valuable information there that you can check out. But that's all I have for you guys today. Reach out if you need anything, and I will see you guys next Wednesday at 12, the same time, to discuss our next topic for our next live stream. So thank you guys for watching.